This video demonstrates how to scan a residual limb using an iPad and Structure 3D sensor with either the OSER Portal app or Design Studio app. The first step is to connect the scanner to your iPad. This will initialize the sensor. Next, position the patient for scanning. To make scanning easier, have the patient sit as high as possible. If available, an exam table is ideal. Have the patient extend their limb as much as they can. For comfort, the patient can use their hands to support their thigh. Please ensure their hands are well above where you expect the socket trim lines so the hands don't interfere with the limb shape. Next, while on the lateral side, move the iPad down to the same level as the limb. Use your fingers to pinch and expand the scan box as needed to include the entire limb surface. The areas with red coloring will be included in the scan. If you're too close, the limb will lose the red coloring. When this happens, move back until the limb turns red and you can see that the entire limb is inside the scan box. It's okay if you can see all the limb and some of the chair or table inside the box. Just make sure not to include the entire body, as that will compromise scan quality. We find that the optimal distance from scanner to limb is about one meter. It may take a bit of practice scanning to become confident and efficient. For better scans, keep consistent distance from limb to scanner. Maintaining the crosshairs on the limb helps to keep consistent distance from the limb through the entire scan. Once ready, press the scan button and allow the scanner to frost the limb. Pause on the lateral side until frosting is complete. Then angle the scanner up and down a bit to capture more of the limb. If you're too close or too far, the limb will turn red indicating the surface is out of the scan area. When this happens, move back or forward until the limb turns white and you can see that the entire limb is inside the scan box. Next, move to the anterior while maintaining the limb within the box the entire time. Try to move smoothly, as jerky movements can cause the scanner to lose track. If a warning message appears while moving to the anterior view, you don't need to stop immediately. Just pause at the anterior view until the warning message goes away. Pausing helps improve the color view of the model when the scan is complete. Drop down slowly to scan the distal end and continue down to the posterior. Angle or drop down to capture more of the posterior side, then pause. Next, move to the medial side and pause for a moment. When you finish the scan, press stop. Ensure the limb is still within the boundary box when hitting stop. At this point, it's okay to let the patient relax. Now, to be sure you captured a usable scan, you'll want to review a couple of different views before pressing Upload. First, look at the shaded view, where you see the solid surface. Ideally, the entire surface will be filled in with no gaps. Even if you have a small gap, maybe up to one inch wide, the scan may still be usable. Next, look at the X-ray view. You want to ensure the entire surface of the limb is connected with no gaps or disruptions in the limb surface. In particular, look at the posterior side, as this is the most difficult place to scan completely. If you see a posterior gap, it's best to scan the limb again before pressing Upload. Once you confirm that the entire limb surface is solid and smooth, press Upload and the scan will be stored inside the portal. The key difference when scanning an amputee sitting in a chair is it will take a bit more work to capture the posterior limb surface compared to when the amputee is sitting elevated on an exam table. When sitting in a standard height chair, have the patient lift their limb up and extend it out as much as possible, using their hands for support underneath the thigh. Next, while on the lateral side, move the iPad down to the same level as the limb. Once ready, Press the scan button and allow the scanner to frost the limb. Pause on the lateral side until frosting is complete. Then angle the scanner up and down a bit to capture more of the limb. Next, move to the anterior while maintaining the limb within the box the entire time. Drop down slowly to scan the distal end and continue down to the posterior. Angle or drop down to capture more of the posterior side, then pause. 
It may take a bit of practice scanning to become confident and efficient capturing the posterior view the first try. When you finish the scan, press stop. If the amputee is not very mobile, such as in a rehab facility, you may need to scan with the amputee lying supine. In this situation, have the patient lift their limb up, maintaining extension as best they can. Have the patient use their hands to support their thigh to try and keep the limb from moving. Please ensure their hands are well above where you expect the socket trim lines, so the hands don't interfere with the limb shape. Using the same steps outlined earlier in this video, scan the lateral, anterior, distal, posterior, and medial sides of the limb. When you finish the scan, press stop and have the patient relax. For transfemoral sockets, scans generally aren't needed unless you see one of these two situations. A knee disarticulation or with the liner on, the distal limb shape cannot be described as conical, cylindrical, square, or bulbous. For these cases, a scan of the distal end of the limb can be merged with a brim style given measurements and length are provided. We find that following a consistent process yields better scans and that with a bit of practice, you'll develop a consistent process that works best for you.